afternoon and morning over there in British Columbia. And uh, we <clears throat> commit our fellowship today into your hands. Speak to us, guide us, lead us in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. We pray, amen. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Yes. Uh, at the beginning, um, this is our fellowship. So feel free to ask any questions that you have uh, in the process of time. And mm -hmm. feel free to ask any questions. Uh, participation is highly encouraged. Do not be discouraged or feel timid or feel like your question is invalid or foolish or stupid. There are no foolish questions. We are all here to learn and to grow. Amen. And so good to have you over there. So we have our sister Angie in British Columbia, all the way to Riyadh. And then we have uh, Nairobi on board, South Africa on board, Namibia as well. And for me over here in the UK. Good. And Deshi has just joined us. Welcome Deshika. So this has, we have been having a series of um, Christ Center Singles Fellowship. We began our fellowships way back, I think in December last year. And we've been covering a number of topics. Last time we were talking about forgiveness and the apology, love language of apology. We also spent some time discussing the five love languages. And we also spent some time talking about uh, spiritual maturity, as well as uh, how to know whether one is ready for marriage and how to find the right uh, partner for marriage and all those things and how to, <clears throat> what to implement, what to do when one is preparing for marriage. Yet eventually this whole uh, singles fellowship is geared towards that, preparing ourselves for marriage life, married life. And if I can just pull up, oh, we also discussed a number of things like family planning and yeah, how do, how do I know whom to marry and all those stuff. Okay. And last time we discussed, <clears throat> we talked about um, the importance of, um, oh, we talked about properties. Uh, is it a problem? Properties before marriage. Uh, what about debts? We discussed the issue of debts and financial accountability. And the right way to say, I am sorry. So we discussed quite a number of things last time. And so I begin with uh, what I like to always begin with. And that is to ask for expectations. What are your expectations for our session today? Slash, what would you like us to cover today? And also, what questions do you have that you hope will be addressed? So we can begin with anybody. So what are your expectations for today? Or what would you like us to cover today? <clears throat> and what questions do you hope to be, do you have that you want to be addressed? Mm -hmm. Anybody you may feel free to, to speak. Praise the Lord, Sina Bishop. Yes, Sister Eunice. Well, uh, most of the time, I've always been joining the meeting and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with having in mind and uh, very, very sure that I'm not ready for marriage. Okay. I'm not saying I'm going, I'm ready, but today, actually, by the end of this, I want to be like, you know, like I've been joining knowing that okay, 
maybe just wanted i just needed those lessons so they maybe they should help me but um i think i need to have some stand to know whether i want to be ready from here or i don't want to be still so yes. you want to be challenged in whether you are ready or not is that is am i getting you right yeah 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 actually you know those past times that we've been um having these meetings i've been uh, like just joining you know to gain that knowledge mm -hmm. of yeah, the marriage and the single life mm -hmm. yes <laughs> uh -huh. so i would like to be sure today so actually i'm going to try as much as i can to in order to finish the meeting yeah i'm going to try as much as i can well the, the recording will be available as well uh, in case you are uh, not be able to <clears throat> to go through the end, the recordings will be available and um, <clears throat> you can catch up should you not manage to go all the way through. Um, are you getting me? Yes, I can hear you, I hope. Oh, okay. Yes, great. Um, yes, Angie, <clears throat> Angie, the, we have the recordings from the previous meetings. I'm not sure if you'll be able to go through them. Uh, the, as for documentation, we don't, the notes are not very comprehensive. They are very short, short knit bits. I can share the notes very, very brief. They are very, very brief. It's like high yield notes. <laughs> Shalom, it is well. Um, if you do have the recording, I, I don't mind watching it. I can be able to um, take some time and watch it. So that's well. Yeah, probably I must have missed it, but um, if you could just resend it back to me, I would be, I would appreciate. All right, I'll do so. Good. Uh, are you are you part of the group? Okay, I will send the I'll send you the links. I'll send you the links. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Pastor Kathy. Welcome from Ireland, and um, who else? Oli. Oli cannot hear me. Nathan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Nathan. Uh, also, who else joined us recently? Martha. Welcome, Martha. Amen. Thank you so much, please, Bishop. Amen. And uh, Oli, Oli, you are welcome. I think you're joining us for the first time. Great. So, <clears throat> for those of you that have just joined, we are at the introduction stage. Uh, we are sharing our expectations. Um, questions? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and questions to be addressed. Great. So we are here sharing our expectations for today. In case you have a question that you want to be addressed. Okay. Anybody else who would like to share their expectations? Uh, somebody wrote a message, eh? or is it only Angel? Okay, it was Angel. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Want to speak? Don't Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, Denise. Okay, you know, okay, Sina Bishop, sometimes, you know, um, in this life, uh, people go through, okay, a lot, and uh, most of ladies. And so, okay, is do you think that when, you know, maybe you're going through a lot mm -hmm. and it's just troublesome and, uh, yeah, do you think, like, you know, thinking about marriage is always the right option is marriage like are you okay to start thinking about marriage something that kind yeah when you go when you're going through a lot is that right is it, yeah are you getting my point i hope you're getting it yeah 
Uh, I wrote down your question. Did I get it right? Is thinking about marriage an option when you're going through a lot of difficulties? Yeah. All right. That's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. We'll deliberate on that. Very, very important question, by the way. Uh huh. Uh, thank you, Sister Eunice. Uh, okay, so if nobody wants to add anything, then uh, we begin, right? I, I think I'll add something, Blessed Bishop. Okay. Not because I really want to, but because it's it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. Okay, um, let me just go at it because um, I believe we are all, all mature and um, this is the best platform for us to be able to fellowship together and um, share ideas by the grace of God. So what I was wondering to myself is this, okay, um, like some of us, or maybe um, like myself, I might have not really like in the past, way back in the past, not been living in the right life, you know, in the righteous life, but I came to the Lord and I've been in with the Lord, you know, like living this life of um, repentance and holiness for quite a while. But I know 100% like um, I want to settle down and get married, but I'm not going to look outside the fellowship, like uh, my ministry, to look for a, a partner. Because um, the way I was meant to understand, like uh, after speaking to, I think, two different, um, you know, like elders in the ministry, they said that you have to probably speak to your bishop mm -hmm. and um, mention that you're already, you're interested in marriage. And then it's like as though the bishops get to have all information about people who are interested in marriage and they can be able to see who to connect. Mm -hmm. But okay. So if that is clear and if that is correct, um, then at what point do the bishops or how many bishops are you supposed to be at, uh, <laughs> giving this same information that you're ready to settle down and, and get married? Because um, I'm sure there are very many bishops, blessed bishops in the ministry, but you're not hearing back to know like, um, how, how do they go about who's going to connect you or, or what's how are you I don't even know what to ask now because I'm just wondering you've told maybe two two um, elders or bishops and then probably you've not heard back for, for, from them for a while but you're wondering do you tell many others so that you're it's like as though you have given information to others so that they can all remember okay yeah there's Angie or there's somebody else who wants to get connected what happens okay that's a very important question, yes. A very complicated one, but yes, very important. A very good question. Um, how many bishops should I talk to, or should I even talk to many bishops? Good question. <laughs> Shalom, amen. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> I can start. Uh, we can start by addressing these questions. If nobody else has um, has anything to add, uh, has any more question that you'd like to pose. Uh, we can start by addressing these questions and then we dive into our session because I think they are very good questions uh, to even kick off our discussion. All right. Uh, is thinking about marriage an option when you're going through a lot of difficulties? The key word here is difficulties, right? Uh, the key word here is difficulties. And when you, when you think about difficulties, the question is, what are the difficulties? Because there are a host of, of issues that can be termed difficulties. You, there are a number of things that can fall under the word difficulties. Car accident, uh, family, financial issues, study issues, uh, health issues, probably, um, of course, car accident can probably fall under health issues. And even health issues are also are diverse. We can talk about um, uh, incapacitating health issues, the ones that can render you, um, uh, what's the word, disabled, yeah? Render you disabled to such an extent that you cannot take care of yourself. There are health uh, issues that, that are more embarrassing, like HIV and you know, sexual, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, considering that um, we were not all born again before we came to know Christ, 
Yeah, we all have diverse backgrounds. Um, so you can have such uh, um, embarrassing issues. I mean, should I say sensitive, sensitive health issues like HIV and um, what other sexually transmitted pregnancy or history of abortion or other difficulties can also be um, relationships that never work out. Yeah. Some of us could have been involved in a number of relationships that ended tragically every single time. And you, and you are left wondering, am I cursed or what? I can never seem to uh, sustain a relationship. So all these issues constitute difficulties. So therefore the question then comes, is, is thinking about marriage an option when you're going through a lot of difficulties? Perhaps this question is addressing specific, a specific kind of difficulty because having difficulties in and of itself does not constitute a challenge to marry, a problem does not constitute a stumbling block to getting married, amen? Just because you have problems does not mean you are not allowed to get married. Uh, and so, and each and every one of us have unique difficulties, unique situations. The timing, of course, timing is one issue. Should you get married immediately after a certain event has happened? Um, uh, probably not, but to say is thinking about marriage an option. Marriage, we, we as human beings, we are broken people. None of us uh, have it all together, right? None of us have it all together. And to get married, you, you can never say that I'm only ready to get married when I'm perfect. A, a certain level of, a, of perfection where you don't need to grow, you don't need to learn anything more, you don't need to sort out any issues, yeah? So there is no such thing as you must only get married when you have everything uh, sorted out. <laughs> yeah, so because marriage is a process of growth as well. And there are a host of issues that uh, you'll never discover until you finally get married. There are certain things about yourself that you'll never discover until you get married, which can even pose, which can also be um, uh, issues of contestation in marriage that you'll never think about um, when before before marriage, when you are single. And so are there specific difficulties that preclude one from getting married? Are there set specific difficulties that um, that disqualify one from getting married? What do you guys think? So since there are a host of issues that uh, that fall under this word difficulties, let me bring you in here. Do you think there is any particular difficulty that preclude one from getting married, from thinking about marriage? Anybody may jump in. Welcome, um, Avasia, Josephine, who else joined us recently? Uh, Paulina, welcome, welcome. Yes, uh, Sister. Actually, I think there are difficulties like that can hinder someone from maybe thinking whether they'll get married or not. Like, like um, for example, when maybe you have you're suffering from this health, uh, you when maybe you have underlying health conditions, mm -hmm. yeah, so it can be a problem. Which and, underlying health conditions? Like well, like like which? HIV, of course. Like HIV. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. You're saying HIV is one such a uh, um, issue of uh, right? Yeah, and um, about uh, yeah, school issues. Yeah, that can also be a problem. Which somebody, of? yeah, actually, like you know, somebody might have learned, but not to an extent that you know that better. They're not in that you know level, that good level. So they may be thinking that they're not worth being married but okay yeah they'll maybe like you know i just want to be alone uh, uh like uh, there's no man who will be thinking about me so yeah somebody feeling unworthy yeah feeling of being unworthy owing to what owing to their looks or owing to their school performance or what? yeah yeah their school levels 
So they are not intellectually. You feel like oh, you, you, probably somebody who's who's not an A student or somebody who's not a B student. You mean or what? Okay. <laughs> I don't understand the A and B students. What I know here in Kenya, it's you know the class eight, the form four level, eight yeah. level, and uh, the college and the university level. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so maybe you're just a class eight lever, something of that sort, of that kind, and you know you are in the ministry. You've never you've never continued with the education, so you mm -hmm. might be having that feeling of being unworthy. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that disqualifies one from getting married? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, you can get into marriage and, you know, with the fear, okay, you may want to get into marriage, but, you know, that fear of, you know, you'll be maybe being frustrated because you don't, you didn't, like, learn well. <laughs> so you may be having that fear that your husband. Okay. All right, that's a very interesting take. All right, Angie wants to say something. Thank you, thank you, Sister Angie. Um, Eunice. Thank you for that. Uh, Amen. Yeah, thank you, Blessed Bishop. Um, yeah. Well, I would just like to encourage my uh, brothers and sisters who are in the uh, meeting today, in the fellowship today, that um, I think when it comes to any kind of uh, difficulties or hardships, there's nothing that uh, we cannot overcome by the grace of God, because um, every problem is unique and diverse to individuals. And um, when you're talking about something like health, there are even those who we've heard of in the ministry who probably have gotten married and they were even unable to deliver a child, but by the grace of God, the, through the mightiest, mightiest prophets, we have seen even a, a lady conceiving and she has a child and we are uh, witnesses to all this. We've even seen of the um, of the big mighty uh, prophecy that happened with um, uh, our senior Archbishop uh, Litunda. But, um, just coming away from uh, um, issues in regards to health, even when you're talking about feeling unworthy because maybe your educational level is is um, not up to par or it's not to the best level. I think that is um, a very, very tiny problem because I also have like one of my relatives, um, a male relative who has even studied in Manchester in UK and he came back home um, to Kenya and he is married to a lady who did not even complete, uh, she did not complete her, you know, like class eight. And uh, we have a great, family you know like uh, they're they're married they have children the lady yeah. she's she's still struggling yeah. to pray and um <laughs> and upgrade her you know like you know her, her her language her english is not up to tall but you know what it's not about the the, the english you're speaking it's not about the incapability of you to be able to understand um, scientific or mathematical formulas it's your heart how how pure you are in your heart and how how beautiful you are because even at whatever age you are, I think the Lord can still open up a, a path and a way for you to be able to even continue with your studies later on. There are people who even go to school even at 40 years or, or 30 years or even 50 years, even 50 years. For me, I was even in university with a, um, a minister and that minister was, I think, in the age of around 46 years. And that time I was in that, in that class around uh, 20 years old so what, what if you look at that what are what are we saying like you know it's not uh, it's not about your age so a total feeling of unworthiness that is the the um, those those are the kind of lies and the tricks that the devil uses so that we can be able to feel totally unworthy and then he makes us lose on time because the more we, you you take so much time it to to even like decide that you want to settle down and get married to this faithful uh, companion or partner that God has given you, then you're losing on on time. Time is going to catch up with you and you start dealing with a different problem, maybe at a later age when you feel now that, oh my gosh, I'm now too old to get married. So Shalom, that is my um, taking. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Angie. And you're very right. Uh, you see, mar marriage, number one, we don't get married because somebody 
uh, the, the the level of education should never be the 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 deal breaker, <laughs> whether to get married or not. Yeah, you know, education is fairly a recent phenomenon. Education is very recent. Uh, it's just in the last uh, few hundreds of year, uh, few hundred years, that we began with school. Prior to universities, there was a period when people never went to school. They never went to university. Of course, it increases your chance of getting a job. It increases uh, your chance of, um, um, of, uh, of, of being financially uh, stable when you have a good education. But even with, without a higher level of education, uh, you can still make it in life. You can still have a successful marriage. Successful marriage does not depend on the level of qualification that you have. Now, since we're talking about marriage here, it does not depend on how much education you have, whether you have PhD or master's degree or degree or high school, whether you're a high school leaver, that does not determine how successful your marriage is going to be. Right? It's yeah. all, yes, it is your preparation, the preparation that you put in. You have, you have billionaires and multimillionaires who have never been to school and whose, mar whose marriages ended terribly. Their, their millions and their billions of dollars could not save their marriages. We have professor, professors of theology, professors of philosophy, professors of engineering who have mm. devastated marriages, whose marriages ended terribly, not because they are dumb intellectually, right? And so uh, your level of qualification does not determine whether you're, you are ready for marriage or not. You can have somebody who's a professor and still not ready for marriage. Yeah, they still have the bad character. They, they have a bad character that will, that will destroy their marriage, their marriage, irrespective of who they get married to. Okay. Yes, Kathy, you wanted to say something? I'm just agreeing. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. So uh, finances, education, level of education does not preclude anybody from getting married. If you want to get married, you prepare yourself. And that, that level of that preparation that is required is not pegged to your level of qualification. Anybody can prepare for marriage, uh, whether they can have children or not. HIV, yes, is a very sensitive matter. Um, mm -hmm. Must be handled, uh, what's the word? Individually, yeah. Well, we have people that the Lord has been healing from HIV and all these things. Uh, this one is a very sensitive matter that requires, of course, even uh, medical uh, uh, medical doctors' uh, involvement. Uh, however, apart from complicated issues like HIV, um, even if you have uh, you have one eye that is not working, that does not disqualify you from getting married. <laughs> there is a story of um, a couple that was planning to get married. In fact. Before, before I, let me not go ahead of myself. There was a couple that <laughs> to, 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 to get married and um, they were all vibrant young people, Christians and um, well-educated. They met at university. And a few weeks before their wedding, the gentleman was involved in a car accident that left him uh, paralyzed that left him in a coma, deep coma. Ouch. Unable to speak well. He could not speak well. When he tries to speak, he could not control the voice. It would just shoot out. When he would try to laugh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's quite, quite unpleasant, really. Nothing you'd wish for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the girl had to make a decision. Shall I stay with this man? that I was planning to marry, who's now literally unable to take care of himself. Mm. Cannot cook anymore. Cannot do the wonderful uh, things that he used to do. And does not remember, his memory now was very short. He now had sh short memory. Shall I still get married to this man? Or shall I go off and find another Prince Charming? So they were already engaged? They were engaged, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what would you do? 
Yeah, that, that is a very difficult situation. For a woman, you're thinking ahead. You are thinking of possibly the next 20, 30 years being a caretaker to your husband and never knowing when he's going to die if you get married to him. Yeah. Mm. A caretaker means you have to feed him all the time, you have to change his clothes, you have to you know, help him do number two all the time. Uh, so literally, you are everything at home. You are the mother, almost. Yes, everything. If you have children, then uh, you are the one to do everything, to take the children wherever. You are, the, you are going to be the breadwinner of the house because he can't work. <laughs> mm. That's tricky. Very tricky. And um, it's very easy to, to think that, uh, well, I know what to do. I'll just quit. <laughs> yeah. But the lady decided to stay and get married mm -hmm. and get married to the man. And, and what does that uh, bring to attention? That brings to attention what is really love what is love do you only love somebody when they are when they have all that you're looking for all the perfect things yeah. unconditional love this brings the question all of that what is unconditional love <laughs> uh, it, it, you have to go back and and and, and re-examine your value why do, why do I want to get married? Is it because I want God's love to, be, to emanate through me or is it because I want somebody to take care of me? So it, it takes you back to your foundation. Re-examine everything that, that, that you believe in. So to decide to marry such a person is not a bad decision, yeah? As long as you are ready to, 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 to what? To, 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 as, as long as you are ready for what, what, is, what is ahead. You must count your cost, yeah? Uh, mm. As I've been receiving recently. Count your cost. I think in that scenario where they were already engaged, they knew each other, they were going to get married. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like fulfilling the vows to death do us part <laughs> in sickness and in health. So I think she just demonstrated that um, even if you get sick or something happens to you, I'm here to stick with you. Yeah. I just don't abandon you when you're now, you know, uh, rendered useless almost in terms of using your body. And, and of course, the same thing could happen after getting married. The same thing could happen immediately you get married in, in, on, on your honeymoon. You, anything can happen. So, uh, uh, indeed, um, living out that, those vows, it becomes a very powerful platform. To, to then learn what it truly means to love somebody uh, selflessly, mm. unconditionally. Of course, there are issues like um, um, bipolar as well. So all the health issues really uh, bring, brings us back to love and patience and all these things. And remembering that marriage is God's design and the goal of marriage is that we may reflect Christ in our marriages, that we may reflect Christ in our lives. It's not so that we can get rich. It's not so that uh, somebody <laughs> to fly us to our holiday destination. First class. <laughs> it's not so that we can have the, the, the wedding that, that is the talk of the town. It's not so that <laughs> 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 but Marriage, number one, is for God's glory. Amen. So whatever God's glory means, according to God's call upon you, yeah, things happen. Things definitely happen. And so, yeah, difficulties. Mm, if you are going through certain challenges yourself and you feel like uh, I'm not worthy to get married, yeah? mm. as you said, the enemy is very good at that. He's very good at disqualifying us, at telling us all the lies that for us to believe, to disqualify ourselves. Remember fear, somebody said fear is the false evidence appearing real, yeah? And it's so true. The enemy yeah. presents all the possible scenarios that could go wrong, 
all the negative scenarios that you could imagine to scare the hell out of you, to make you scared and afraid. And when you are afraid, you are easy, you are easy prey. You can, you'll never get anything done if you are, if you are, if you are fearful. Yeah. It paralyzes you. It, it keeps you. It keeps you so preoccupied with thinking about this event that you're afraid of that, that you cannot do anything else. Mm. You're defeated before you even begin. Yeah, but we have to learn to find refuge in the Lord, to find help in the Lord, to help us overcome our challenges. Is it healing that we need? Then ask the Lord for healing. But even if the Lord does not heal you, that does not mean that you should disqualify yourself. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can have a brother probably who has uh, never had a, a successful relationship or a sister who has never had a successful relationship. Just because you had five past unsuccessful relationships does not mean uh, you'll never have a good marriage. Yeah, it just yeah. means you need to re-examine yourself. What is it that I've been doing wrong? Maybe I need to repent from the way I've been approaching, um, from the way I've been behaving. Yeah, Lord, open, uh, open my eyes. Help me to understand what is it that I need to change in my life so that uh, I can be in a better position. And, and maybe that time you are not even in the Lord. So there's many factors that might have um, affected your relationships previously. Yes. You know? You went there with different motives, different intentions, and you know the outcome will always be what you give it. Definitely, which includes things like children or abortions in the past. These are all things that happen, but we can still find forgiveness and restoration in the Lord. Yeah. Um, yeah. So unworthiness, it is easy to feel unworthy. It also depends. Maybe some, sometimes you feel unworthy because people are saying too many things to you and you believe what the enemy is saying to you. Yeah, you believe whether it's your past relationships or your family members, they're telling you you are not worthy and all these things. We need to learn to listen to the Lord and not listen to uh, the enemy. You know, the enemy can use really anybody who wants to use also. So be careful. Don't, don't give ears to the, to the devil. And don't don't lend him your ear, so he may destroy you. But okay, um, senior bishop, you know these things that people say actually, they're really devastating. Yeah, they really affect people. They actually affect someone seriously, mm. and sometimes handling can be a problem. Mm -hmm. You may not know how to handle these issues that people say unto you because they just don't say words. They say very heavy words. Of course. Heavy. Of course, especially if, if it's unbelievers. There are believers also who don't know how to control their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you have to learn to tune out. Sometimes also we like to listen. We like to listen to everything people are saying. It is not your business to know what somebody else is saying about you. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. opinions about you will never change. Uh, you will never change people's opinion about yourself. The only thing that will change them is for you to prove them wrong by your <clears throat> by your way of life. Yeah, but yeah. don't give your don't give your ear to the enemy. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they say. Whether they say you are a witch, whether they say you are too fat, you are too thin. Whether they say you are dumb, that, that does not matter. Yeah? Uh, let them have their say. But you must, as we talked about identity the other time, you must have the right identity. You must fix your eyes on your, on your true identity. Who am I as a child of God? Yes? Sometimes, okay, no, people may be saying words to you and uh, we're all human of course so you like maybe you can find it difficult to forgive though you know you're supposed to forgive but you, you know you just find it hard they really hurt they hurt a lot they do hurt so yeah how do you like you know how do you go about that situation is it like do you just stop associating with these people totally 
and just cut them off your life or what are you supposed to do? Because, you know, maybe pretending like you're okay and you're not okay can be a bit difficult sometimes. What type of people those are, huh? um, sometimes you may need to, to talk to, some, to somebody and tell them, can you please stop this? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> if there are bullies on the internet, just shut them down. Uh, if there are bullies from school, who know? <laughs> uh, if there are bullies from school or bullies from church, uh, then there may be actions that may be taken. If it's friends, if it's people that call themselves your friends, uh, you may need to talk to them. If they refuse, then you may need to shut to 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 what to 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 separate. Yeah, separation is an option. It is possible. Uh, you may have to look for new friends. You may have to look for new associations. You may have to look for somebody that can actually uh, build your life rather than tear you down. Yeah. Okay, you know, okay, maybe, you know, these people, they're like, you know, you have very close family uh, there. You have very close family. And so you could be thinking, am I now going to separate from my family and just, you know, live my own life? Well, so. <laughs> You may not need to separate from your family, but um, if it's family members uh, and they don't want to change their approach, their attitude, their behavior, uh, then your level of interaction, you just change your level of interaction. You cannot force people to change. Yeah, You continue to pray for them and, and ask the Lord to forgive them or forgive them yourself. Uh, continue to love them and pray for them. Uh, but the level of interaction, there are different levels of interaction. There are those that are so close, uh, you talk on a daily basis, and there are those that you meet every now and then. So if they used to be the type of people that are so close, you used to confide in them, and now they are spilling everything you say to them, they spill it out there, and they're bad-mouthing you out there, and then maybe you need to, to, reduce, to reduce how much you interact with them. Not to hate them or to, uh, or to not consider them as your family members anymore, but just... Mm -hmm reduce <laughs> the best thing you can do also is just ask the Lord to fill in you know to fill you that you do not need somebody else's approval or appreciation so in terms of because people will always talk no matter how good you may be people always find things to say so I think in that in that sense you could um, even if it's a family member if they say something negative don't meditate on the negative thing. Try to um, meditate on the word and what the word says about you. You know, if it's something they have stated that you think it might be true, like something negative in you, and ask the Lord to help you change. Um, if it's something just being spiteful, then, you know, you ask the Lord to give you the strength on how to deal with such people. Because I'm sure everybody, every single one of us have experienced Somebody, it's usually most people who are close to you that can, um, ask, you know, really hurt you. because strangers really they say something you're like yeah whatever, but if it's somebody you're close to, your family, your close friend, mm -hmm. they are the ones who normally have those words that can really break you down. Definitely. But um, for if it's a family, you just um, maybe reduce your interaction, and also. It's, as the bishop, Blessed Bishop has said, you speak to them and tell them, you know, I don't like the way you are talking to me or what you are, you are saying to me. It is very hurtful and it's not true, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and um, at least they will know that what they said is not true. And if they continue, then you just separate for a while and pray for them. Yes, that's right. You don't, you don't always have to listen to what somebody says. Because um, when you meditate on it, that's when it becomes painful. You know? You yeah. just have to remind yourself, I'm a child of God. I'm, he, you know, now meditate on what the Lord says about you. Definitely. I'm the head and not the tail, you know. <laughs> just quote um, the word of God to yourself and the Lord will really empower you to overcome all these challenges. Indeed. The one thing, the one thing that's very difficult is to change people. And you know how difficult it is to deal with yourself, yeah? to deal with your own habits and so, so the best thing that you can do is to talk to the person and request that they change their approach, change their behavior, yeah? and treat you with, with better respect. Uh, or if you are afraid to approach them by yourself, then 
ask somebody to accompany you to have a serious talk with them. Um, <laughs> if, they refuse, if they refuse totally, then uh, yes, bring it to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to help you. But also remember, these are also opportunities of, uh, of evangelism. When, 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 when somebody is being a nuisance to you, when somebody is being a thorn in the flesh to you, you are under obligation to still love them and show them the love of Christ, yeah? And pray for them, pray for their salvation. So not to uh, curse them and not to wish them ill. So you have to, to balance all these things. You have to be mindful of all these things at all times. Because you want, should Christ restore this person, you want to be found in the right place with the right heart to receive them and, uh, and embrace them. Yeah. Okay. How many bishops should you talk to before your readiness, about your readiness in, for marriage? Talk to your presiding bishop your, your, or your pastor, your pastor, your church, your, is it your church? Your, 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 your home church pastor, your home church bishop. You don't have to talk to me and then talk to Bishop Banda and then talk to Pastor Kathy and then after that to speak to uh, Bishop Matthew. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't need to do that, Sister Angie. Um, because these are matters of great trust, yeah? Uh, when, it, when you are preparing for marriage and you want to confide, you, you'd want to confide into somebody that, uh, uh, that you trust, somebody that, is, uh, that has demonstrated uh, that they are there for you. So if you're in Canada, you shouldn't be calling a bishop in, 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 in where? In, 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 um, in UK. <laughs> Shalom. I'm thinking of Italy. Uh, a bishop in UK, just because you should talk to a bishop, unless if it's a friend of yours and you want advice. Yeah. Uh, I understand our ministry is very now uh, all over the place and we, we, we interact on a massive. We're international. We are, we are international yeah. very much. Uh, so. If, if you want to share, to share with me about your plans for getting married and you want my advice and all that, it's up to you, yeah? If you don't trust me with that, then uh, definitely you have other people that you trust. But your, 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 your church pastor, your home church pastor, or your home bishop from your church, uh, that one will definitely have to know because they must be involved in your, um, in your preparations. Okay, amen. That is that is um, in order, and I'm, um, and I, I um, thank you for your for for that response. But what I was just wondering is like, okay, you've already talked. To, okay, somebody has already talked to you, blessed bishop. They've already talked to you, and they've told you that they are ready to. They they feel they are ready to settle down in marriage, but um, they hope that you can be able to try and see. Or, you know, like you pray about it, right? Mm -hmm. You pray about it. Yeah, you pray. Okay. So you pray about it with them and then you just leave it like that to the Lord until perhaps somebody comes. No, and, uh, you need to be very purposeful. Uh, we don't leave things, uh, things up to chance uh, because as we said once at this, on this platform, the Lord has given us a brain to think and a mind, uh, yes, and a mind to think as well and uh, to plan. The Lord has given us all these faculties for a reason. When, when, when a man approaches you and says, I want your hand in marriage, you don't, he doesn't, he's not supposed to be waiting indefinitely until, until, until I hear, uh, let's say, the cock crowing three times. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed Bishop, let me help you a little bit. I think you must have gotten me a little wrong. <laughs> okay, in this case, there's no cock crowing anywhere, and there's no man. There's no man um, who has told you he's interested, or woman who's to, you know shown like okay, there's interest and in, um, yeah, waiting. You know, two people are waiting for each other. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering is this: I I come to you, you're my bishop. I tell you, Blessed Bishop. 
um, Julius, I need your help because um, I need to settle down in marriage, but um, I don't have, I don't a, have partner. a partner. Yeah, I don't have a partner and I'm wondering what do I do? So you say to me, um, Sister Angie, let's let's pray first to the Lord so that at least we can petition this issue to the Lord and he may hear your prayer. So you pray and and uh, we pray deeply. We speak about the issues, you know, we deliberate. And then after that, we say, OK, let's leave this now to the Lord. And hopefully we might be able to find a partner within the ministry. So then you're now waiting. You wait. You're waiting. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That's the scenario. And so no, you're, you're, waiting. you're just waiting. You're waiting. There's not cock crowing. There's nothing. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Kathy, don't make me laugh. I know you're laughing at the back. <laughs> there's no cock crowing. There's no symbol. There's no sign. All you're doing is you're waiting. But at the same time, um, you, you're not, you're not trying to focus your mind extremely too much on that issue because then it becomes an idol. Eh? You don't want it to be an idol. So you just want to, to surround yourself with the involvements that you do every day, like work, you know, like you go to work, you go to, you do this and that, but you know that behind the scenes, as you pray, you know, you ask the Lord, remember me, remember me. It's an issue. It's an issue you, you desire to settle down. But this, 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 culprit or candidate has not been found in the name of jesus <laughs> i think it's god's timing also you know um because if he has not come maybe it's because the lord has not brought him to your path yet yet uh, -huh. uh you, you talked about uh the the involvement of the bishop to uh, connect uh, people who are interested in marriage yeah amen yeah yes if um, uh, I have I have I have not I'm not well much I'm not well acquainted with the with the with, the, with that uh, scenario, um, but if, if 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 you have there an agreement with the bishop that uh, if the bishop knows somebody that uh, uh, is interested in, in in marriage marrying yeah and. Uh, you have in, shown your interest that you would like to get married. There's another brother that is interested in getting married, and and you have no you have no problem for the for the bishop to introduce uh, the two of you, and to pray about the possibility of uh, of starting a relationship. Then, uh, of course, you the, the bishop cannot be forced. If the bishop does not know anybody yet, uh, he cannot try to prepare somebody just out of. Uh, <laughs> Out of the blue. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very much, Blessed Bishop. I won't take much time for everybody else because I know we've already spoken all about this um, yeah. two questions in one hour, but I appreciate. I think I will pick it up with you on a separate or a personal note. <laughs> Shalom. Thank you very much. Oh, you're, you're very much welcome. Uh, the, the, the aspect of faith does come in. Uh, let me just finish up with this. The aspect of faith does come in. We need to continue to patiently wait on the Lord, as Sister Catherine said. Um, again, we have very unique path, pathways, uh, unique callings. Um, sometimes the Lord may call you to marry somebody in your local church. Sometimes the Lord may call you to marry somebody from a different country. And, uh, and the Lord does not always reveal everything at once to us. So let us remember patience. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, thank you, Sister Angie. It's a very good question indeed, and um, it can uh, take ages to uh, to discuss. But it's Amen. not. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. There are some questions that were posted here as well. Let's get into these ones. Um, how can you distinguish a person who is? We discussed this issue of lust and love. How can you distinguish a person who's lusting at you and a person who really? loves you how do you distinguish between infatuation and true love uh time the time aspect uh time aspect is one issue uh character 
character is somebody's image, who they are, how they behave. They are oh, <laughs> identity. Who is this person? Yeah. Uh, somebody meets you in a taxi somewhere there in Namibia and say, oh, my sister, I love you. Eh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> I would like to I would like to marry you. Can you please give me your number? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all gotten that in the streets. Some men are just I don't know, madness. <laughs> so that is uh we recall that rubbish, eh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is is there love there? No. Yeah, no, that is not love. Definitely not love. Uh, you cannot just meet somebody in three minutes. You decide you want to marry them, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? There are there 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 are rare cases. Eh? The Lord. Um, they, some of them say the Lord told me. Yes, I had a dream about you. <laughs> you must test always. <laughs> always test. test spirits. Test motives. Test intentions. Test people. Oh, this is a brother that is in the choir. You don't know whether he's in five other relationships. So you have to do due, uh, to do due diligence. You must be diligent. And avoid, avoid the following. Avoid the following pitfalls. Don't be naive. Do not be naive to believe everything you hear. Do not be lazy so that you don't do your homework and do not be ignorant. <laughs> naive and gullible, let me put here gullible. Don't be naive and gullible where anything that comes with the trouser then you just believe what he says. <laughs> believe everything that he says. These days, these days, these days you even have women who have undergone hormonal therapy. <laughs> To look like men. <laughs> and they're the other way around. Lord have mercy on us. We have we have reached very dangerous times. <laughs> We're soon going home. Oh. Yeah, you have you have somebody wearing a trouser looks like a man, but then uh, <coughs> somebody on therapy. <laughs> so don't be naive and gullible to believe everything. Don't be lazy as to not do your homework. And do not be ignorant. And do not be impatient. Test. Be diligent. So there is no shortcut. There is no shortcut at all. No. We already said this. We spent hours discussing this issue. There is no such shortcut to getting married, to, to, to marriage. Yeah. So if you think you can meet somebody today and then next week you want to get married, <laughs> prepare, prepare yourself. Hollywood. Yeah, that's, that only happens in Hollywood. And if it happens in yeah. your get ready. Get ready for hardships. I mean, yours will be worse than, than for some of us. Marriage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. itself already comes with its uh, blessed challenges. Mm -hmm. Now you enter so naively into a relationship, hoping to marry somebody that you don't even know whether they have impregnated five other people. Hey. So, so distinguish by test time. Give it time. Yeah. Give it time. And prayer. And prayer, of course. How can I forget about prayer? <laughs> yeah. Yes, prayer. And maybe ask God to give you a dream also. <laughs> yeah. Just expose any evil spirit, whatever demon that wants to hold you. The enemy has mastered his art of deceiving mm. in this area of relationship. Yeah, there was a lady uh, in in Russia, uh, a friend of my, uh, of my of my wife's. She got into a relationship with this man, and immediately they got into a relationship. He asked her to buy him a a car, so that he could. Uh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> He should should he not be doing the way, the other way around? You know, he should be offering to buy the car. Hey. They are not married. Hmm. 
He says, buy me a car. So I want to, he has a powerful business idea. I want to do taxi business. She bought the car. Hmm. Hey, what? <laughs> I'm telling you. God. Be careful. I don't cash. I yeah. Somebody. Yeah. And, and remember, your number one enemy here is also yourself. Because mm. when you are caught up by infatuation yourself, because sometimes it's not that the other person is lasting after you and, and, and what? It, your, it, your own infatuation also and naiveness, as we said, can, can work against you. So she went ahead and bought. And then he found... I hope it was a cheap car. <laughs> in Russia. To buy a cheap car, you need a good car that can survive through winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he made more inroads until he managed to get all him all his savings. Uh, is it a devil in human flesh or what? Yes, you can say that again. Uh, he made inroads until he got all his savings, and then after that, he disappeared. This person was they were they from Africa? <laughs> Forgive me. So he is a, basically he was a fraudster. That's what he did. He just he must have been a fraudster. Mm -hmm. And he, he he probably was impersonating names and different. Well, and as a woman, you must especially be careful of what is what is that we call it. Um, what is that word? When you feel like time is running out. <laughs> the clock. Desperate. That's it. Desperate. Yeah. <laughs> be careful of desperation. <laughs> Rather stay single and be with the Lord than marry a devil. Yeah. If I may just add one or two things. I think the, the issue here is um, we're talking about um, we're, um Blessed Bishop, can you just like move up? I want to see the question again. Um, yeah, okay. How do you distinguish a person who is lasting at you and a person who really loves you for marriage? Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I would think that any, okay, a lot of nice things might be said, but um, as soon as you start having those red flags and what are those red flags? Like mm -hmm. somebody is starting to ask, uh, for finances or they're, they're telling you maybe to do something that um, you, you kind of feel, oh my gosh, is this right? Like, let me, I, I don't know, I should, should I just compromise myself immediately so that I can please this person? Because you have a fear and the fear that the devil brings inside of our hearts is that he, if you don't submit to what the person is asking you, um, this pro this prospective uh, pa partner of yours, then you might lose him or you might lose her. So the minute you start feeling that somebody is asking you for something and uh, they're not giving you enough time, yes. ample time for you to be able to resonate about it or to think about it, then you should know that's a red flag. And usually when someone says, oh, I, I need like... Um, you to do this and this maybe they want to pressurize you like why can't i come and see you at your house um even maybe it's you know some like at the wrong hour or you know it's not a place where we are with a number of people because i believe in this ministry that if you're meeting up with somebody then you should meet up in a at you know during daylight hours and especially like uh, maybe you can have somebody to accompany you mm -hmm. so that you're not falling into scene or uh, uh, falling short of the, the favor of God. So those are the red flags you should pick on. And if somebody is rushing you so that you cannot even rush back and say, okay, let me let me talk to somebody else about it. Like you can say, okay, let me rush, let me go and think about it and I'll I'll let you know. But they're like, no, there's no time for you, for, for me to think of, for you to think about it much because you know, the problem is um, if you don't buy the I got a good deal if you don't give me the money to buy the car or if you don't uh, allow me to do ABCD, mm -hmm. then uh, I might miss on the deadline. Then you know that you, that's a red flag. You need to be, the person should be patient. Definitely. And at the end of the day, I think when we're in this ministry, we need to really surround ourselves all the time, all the time and keep reminding ourselves that this is 
uh, you should you should keep thinking and bringing up the the word of the Lord, and keep thinking about how how would the Lord want you to to handle this issue. Very well said, Sister uh, Angie. There, you've you've nailed it on the head. Definitely, those red flags, uh, money seeking behavior, as you said, lustful and sexually immoral behaviors. Yeah, trying to lure you to go into a place all by yourself, uh, demanding behavior, yes, demanding stuff from you, um, disrespectful, somebody who's disrespecting your time does not want to stick to boundaries, yeah, and disrespecting your authority, somebody who does not want anything to do with your parents or your, or your, or your pastor, they want to have secret relationship with you. When you are saying, let us go and tell pastor, <clears throat> I need to talk to my pastor first, and they say, no, 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 you don't need to talk to tell pastor. Uh, 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 don't you trust me or what? You know, things like that. That's very true. Uh, all those red flags. When you see those red flags, and be careful that you involve somebody, as Angie said, uh, involve somebody to help you in the process. Also to help you investigate this person. Investigate that person that you that is uh, <clears throat> seeking for your, uh, for, for your relationship. What is today's topic? We are now handling uh, questions. Today's topic is finishing up on the topic of forgiveness and talking about um, differences in marriage. Oh, well. Yes. But these are very good. I mean, questions. Um, we'll, um, all right. Does one have to be spiritually matured first before thinking about marriage? Yes. This is a definite. Well, yeah. If he's not mature, then you have, you will not understand each other. Yeah. And the importance that you need to uphold in your Christian life. Mm -hmm. If you are, if there is no spiritual maturity, then that means there is spiritual immaturity, and um, you, you you have you have uh, not that you have. Challenges, but your challenges will be more. Yeah, will be worse. In what sense? Um, when you have your conflicts, for example, rather than seeking to solve your conflict, it will be difficult to, to resolve. It will be difficult to come to understanding one another and solve the issue and ask for forgiveness and humble yourself. If you are the one who's not mature, you never see your faults. And you always see your, 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 your husband or your wife as the wrong party. And you and you'll never see the end, and your, and, your, and your spouse will never see the end of it. And if you are <laughs> who's being accused, you'll never see the end of it. Yeah. And there will be never any acknowledgement of wrongdoing. And so you'd find yourself, you are like roommates in your house. Because everybody wants to stick to what they believe. Yeah? You are the problem, and they are only saying, no, you are the problem. And you'd find it would be also difficult to seek for help. Because why should we seek for help? I know I'm right. Why should, and then the other person is also thinking to themselves, why should I seek for help if I know that I'm right? Yeah, I don't need counseling. You are the one who needs counseling. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. And if it's on matters of finance, uh, if you are the one who's financially irresponsible and very immature, you're like, well, I need to spend money. You, you, you end up reasoning. I need to spend money. I don't understand how you can't allow me to spend money. I earn this money, so it's my money. And all those type of, uh, <clears throat> type of things will be exhibited. You do need to be spiritually matured. Yes. There is no room for immaturity in marriage. The result, the proof for the dangers of sex, of, of what, of, uh, of spiritual immaturity is in the divorce cases globally. Yeah? Look at how many marriages have been destroyed by spiritual immaturity. And, and if you are a pastor that is immature, you'll find yourself, you're neglecting your, your marriage in the name of, I'm, I'm doing the work of the Lord, for example. I'm doing the work of the Lord, so I don't understand why you, woman, 
are not allowing me to to serve the Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, the, and your wife is asking, but you, you don't have time for us. So time for what? I'm here. <laughs> what do you want me to do? And all those things. So spiritual maturity is, you can never receive anything. Never. What role does mature, maturity in spirit? Okay, it's the same question. Maturity allows you to make wise decisions. Yeah, wise decisions. Spiritual maturity allows you to center God in your marriage. Put God at the center. Right. Allows you to manage your home well. Yeah. Spiritual maturity allows you to, to demonstrate unconditional love. And all the good things that are supposed to be in marriage. Yeah. Allows you to be quick to forgive, slow to get angry. <laughs> And uh, quick to listen, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Those are all results of spiritual maturity. Allows you to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he's, when he's speaking to you. Yeah. Yes, you can never replace spiritual maturity with anything. Yeah. One might not think of getting... One might not think of... Um, okay of getting married because they, they, they're involved in the situation where they promise to get married. Okay, I'm trying to understand this. Okay, I think they said something came up in the counseling mm -hmm. that made them break up. So maybe something was stated. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe you're not good enough. Because mm -hmm. it says, so it, so this is the biggest hindrance to us. To us, do you leave in fear? That biggest hindrance to live in fear that I'm not worthy. Mm. So maybe because of that session that they had, mm. now she's, he or she is feeling unworthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the goal of marriage counseling? Uh, let me welcome people that joined recently. Uh, Sister Esther Blessing, who else joined recently? Welcome, Saline, Saline Akoth. Welcome, Naomi, Naomi, and who else? Josephine, I already welcomed you. Dennis Musalia, welcome, please. All right. Okay. Amen. Thank you Hello, so Michelle. much, this is Dennis. Thank you, brother Dennis. Yes, sister. Yes. Yes, Sister Meke. Um, the sister who posted that question is, uh, is currently struggling with the network. She will be added on the group where, after the meeting, please. Tell her to join via Telegram, if she can. Uh, she do, I asked her she don't have the Telegram app in the phone. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, she'll, she'll listen to the audio later. But maybe somebody, mm -hmm. uh, the question may also be helpful to somebody here. Uh, it is a good I will reorder the question later. So, 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 so you are in your courtship. You go to your wonderful bishop, your wonderful pastor, <laughs> and then issues begin to come up. Mm -hmm. And when issues are coming up, whether you were involved in abortion, and then now it is coming out, you had an abortion. Now it is coming out, or. You are a guy, you were, you, were, you were in five relationships at the time, and now it's coming out. You have five children, you have five ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and all these things are coming out, and they're embarrassing. Uh, you see, that is the whole goal of marriage counseling, to bring things out in the open. Yeah. Now imagine if these things come out... <laughs> After, 
It will be more difficult to resolve them when you are married. Not that it is impossible, but it will, yeah. it will help because you feel like, why did he lie to me? Yeah. And so marriage counseling is supposed to bring things to, to light, bring out into the open. So that the two of you, you know what you are getting into, so that you get to know one another. Yeah. Am I marrying somebody who's really born again or somebody who's uh, <clears throat> pretending to be born again? Yeah. Or who's trying to be born again? <laughs> <laughs> or who wants to be born again, but they know that they cannot marry me if they don't profess being born again. <laughs> mm. yeah? He says he prays and fasts all the time. Yes. So marriage counseling brings all these out. And it's also supposed to equip you. So it's supposed to bring, <clears throat> bring out stuff to be handled before marriage. And trust me, there are things that must come out. If you're inv involved in, if you had 23 relationships before, they must come out, they must be said. <laughs> you must say it. If there is somebody that you have impregnated and you denied the pregnancy, you must say it. <laughs> Okay, so my question would be, what if he lies in the counseling session? But then I guess you also pray and so the Lord is exposed. Yeah. But you know, I'm sure there's some people who can also lie during the, the marriage counseling, you know? And, and they just do themselves a disservice really because the more you cover up lies with more lies, the more it becomes difficult. Somebody's phone is ringing? Yeah, it's our it's our telephone here. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me let me let me try to address it. Bless the Lord, please. Amen. No, please. Uh, like to post a question here before Bishop come. <laughs> I think they will find it. That uh, am I going to address those issues with the pastors and the bishop or just with my partner? Which issues? The question is that the <laughs> question you posted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have a boyfriend. I have five boyfriends before. No, maybe I have three kids. Am I going to address that with my partner or just with the bishop and the pastors? Maybe all. I think the person you're marrying is the one who would have the issue or not. You know, you'd want to address it with him. Um, to see which way you're going to go forward. You know. Yeah. But anyway, what is the bishop's um, output on that one? <laughs> There's some background noise from somebody. I don't know who that is. Dennis, do you want to say something? Oh, no, no, not, not at all. I think it was just a mistake. I touched the, the microphone icon. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Should I discuss these things with my pastor or only with my partner? Okay. Senior Bishop. Huh? I think we we need to get time to discuss on the importance of marriage counseling and the confession. I think they are going along. Confession of previous experience or whatever. Yeah, I think we are doing that now. Yes, that's, that is a very good one, Sister Meke. Confession of uh, the past. Yeah, past. <laughs> yes. hey, I think that one will just make somebody like, it's okay, I'm done. We are finished. <laughs> want to decide if you still want to go on or to give up so that so that you know what you are getting into mm -hmm. 
Yes, very true. Uh, confession of Japan. In fact, uh, it's one of our. Of our um, yes. Uh, shall I discuss these things with my pastor or only with my partner? All right. Now, number one, your partner mm. must know. Your fiance, your fiancee must know. Yep. You tell your pastor, pastor, I had an abortion before I became born again. Mm -hmm. And then your future husband does not know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get married, mm -hmm. and have difficulty having a child, right? Mm -hmm. Or let's say you are now ready to have a child. And you are saying, let us go to the doctor as we discussed the other time. That before you get married, before you, you, you have a baby, so it is very good to go to the gynecologist and get some good tests done and uh, to check if everything is all right. Now, your husband does not know that you had an abortion or two or three or whatever. Hey. Or you, had, you, had, you have a child that is in, 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 in orphanage somewhere. Hey. <laughs> And now you you are the you are the gynecologist office, and the gynecologist is asking you, "Have you ever had an abortion before?" <laughs> no, we doctors we ask all these questions, blunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you going to say, "My husband, can you please excuse us for two minutes?" He has to excuse you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the ball is rolling. All the dirt is being smeared. <laughs> then surprisingly, you'll be hearing that she's a gravid <laughs> gravidatory while you know her as a... <laughs> as a virgin. You know her as a virgin, but the doctor's record says gravidatory and... Gravidatory. Pa <laughs> and parawati, parawan. <laughs> parawan. <laughs> Sorry for that. Mm. No medicine. That means the amount, the number of uh, pregnancies. And, uh, para is the number of, of uh, births. Yeah. Mm. Number of births. So, so now you have the doctor's office. You cannot, are you, are you going to motion the doctor? Doctor, please don't ask those questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a shocker. Don't be a shocker. If you bring out the truth in the doctor's office, it's going to hurt. Why? Because you have. You, you have heat up the issue and now it's coming up as a shock to your husband. It's just coming up all of a sudden like that. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it, It's going, definitely it's going to ruffle feathers and you need, you may find yourself in, in your pastor's office trying to resolve. Divorce office. Divorce <laughs> yeah, so or, or, or if you say, can you please go out for a while? That will make it, it even more painful for him. Why is my wife telling me to go away? Hmm? I'll be like, I'm not going anywhere. I want to hear. <laughs> Definitely. The husband must be there. Yeah, whether 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 the doctor is doing ultrasound or what. The husband has the right to be there. What's going on? So so it will be very, very painful. He's going to feel betrayed. Now imagine if the roles were reversed. You are the wife. And then you are finding out in the doctor's office that your husband <clears throat> has a child who's an uh, orphanage. And you're like, why didn't you tell me before? You know? and yeah, who, wickedness. Yeah, who knows how the dynamics of that conversation will go? Mm. All the gazookas that are thrown there. We <laughs> <laughs> were hoping things can fix themselves before. Yeah. All the hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid of being rejected by the coming out in marriage counseling session, you're not doing yourself a service. Yeah. You're just, uh, you're not doing yourself a favor. You're doing yourself a disservice and your husband also. And, um, and you're also making things difficult for your pastor. So now here your pastor is trying to help you make sure you build the right foundation. And the right foundation can only be built on the truth. If yeah. you put a little bit of lies there, then that is already a faulty foundation. Mm. Don't be surprised if this marriage goes south somewhere down. Yeah. Yeah? 
And the only thing that will, that will resolve it is when the truth comes back and, and is put away and you remove that line and cast it, send it back to hell where it came from. So yes. marriage must be built on the right foundation. Marriage counseling should help you build that foundation, strengthen that foundation, building it on honesty. You want to ensure that your, your foundation of your marriage is built on honesty, on truth, of course, transparency, yeah? Yeah. Uh, no lies, yeah? And all the painful things. When, when the painful stuff come out, that is what allows you to truly learn to love one another for who you are and not for who you are not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. You want your husband to fall in love with not your, 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 your what? Your fiance to think he's, get, he's marrying somebody that he's really not married. He's going to be disillusioned. You don't understand mm. disillusionment. Yeah? When you are disillusioned in marriage, all the love that you feel that you felt for this person in your heart, your heart was making all the somersault. Once you realize you've been disillusioned, <laughs> all of that just flies out of the window. Everything, yeah. you feel dry. You feel dry, totally dry. Forget about being born again. You <laughs> Do I really know you? <laughs> you can say, oh, I thought you were born again. You are supposed to love me. No, but you, you are right. You started your relationship on a lie. Mm. Marriage counseling is supposed to bring out stuff to be handled before marriage. They must be grappled. If it means postponing your, mar- your, your wedding, let it be. Yeah. So let it be. Because you are not, if you try to impress your, <laughs> your family, I was told a story. There's a couple that um, were pre- preparing for their wedding, but then Things went south before the wedding. There were issues mm-hmm. that were not managed to solve before the wedding. But they were too proud to tell the family that there are, there are issues that have come up. Is it because they have booked the venue, they have booked the accounts, etc., etc.? They were on the way. They mm-hmm. take the groomsmen, the best men, the whatever. And they didn't want to tell anybody that things were There are issues that need some tissues to be handled. So what happened? They got married and they never got to consume, consummate their marriage. What? They got married uh-huh. and never consummated their marriage. So they were living as they were living as roommates and and, and because of the unresolved issue. Very, very I marry and then we leave as roommates. We should have just closed off the wedding. That's nonsense. So, so <laughs> they never consummated their marriage. So they were just living apart in the same house, but apart. Mm-hmm. And family members don't know. The family members are thinking, wow, that was the best wedding we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You can't imagine such pain of heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's a waste of time, a waste of money, a waste of your prayers, everything. Waste of everything. <clears throat> and, and the pride is standing there between them. Big mountain of pride. <laughs> Huge. You know? Mm-hmm. I've heard like the people sometimes the guy leaves you on the day of the altar. Now I think that's a bit childish. You might as well just tell me the day before so you don't get to the altar. <laughs> gone, switched off his phone for like five days. <laughs> if, if it ends on the, uh, during primary, uh, pre, uh, premarital counseling, better, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Just don't waste somebody's time. Just tell them the truth. Definitely. Um, it's, it's very sad what's happening um, with all these things of marriage because I even have a friend of mine who recently had gotten married and um, just shortly after knowing someone for six months she didn't even know the person that well but eventually they just got married and very quickly you know mm-hmm. and uh suddenly she called me and told me like after about two three months that 
she has separated from the man because of different issues. And I, I really sympathize with her. That, that's really what I want to say. At least wait for a year or two, two one year. <laughs> That's Unfortunately, there was no way to wait for even two years or even six months because this fellow she had married had a lot of issues even pending in the police stations. Wow. And uh, yeah, and eventually uh, when the marriage was just starting to cook after three months, yeah. then suddenly uh, there's a lot of drama just coming out. He's in drugs, he's in different things. I think it's very, very, very important to just unshell everything with yeah. your partner before you even um, speak to your bishop mm -hmm. or your, your your pastor. And if he's not opening up clearly, open it now with a, with a, in marriage and counseling and try and see if this is the right person so that you do not have a proposal. Because with a proposal, you're, try, you're already introducing parents and family members. So the best thing is, start and shelling everything together. If you're feeling that this thing is not working out, you need to introduce a pastor or a, your bishop so that now you're in the, in the marriage counseling, everything is just laid bare mm -hmm. and, you know, and open. So um, if you are not meant for each other, that's okay. We can part ways very happily at that moment. No need for wasting people's times and card invitations and, and then a lot of... Um, um, uh, you know, feelings, and that is exactly what is was one of the first questions because you're you're demeaned so much, your you, your feelings are frustrated and hurt, mm -hmm. and then you start wondering if you have that worthwhileness, you're unworthy, are you good enough? And that's how the devil is wasting a lot of time for both men and women, we time wasters, you know. And then suddenly the years have gone. And you find yourself there at 50 years old wondering, am I still getting married? You know, it's, it's, it's very terrible what's happening. I think some people when they get, like I think when you're going into courtship, it basically means like you have stated, I like this girl and she's agreed. And now you're kind of planning. Mm -hmm. You're like in the preparation of marriage, isn't it? In this ministry, like, when you're in courtship is like it is headed towards marriage yeah. and you know at that moment i think that's when you want everybody to be absolutely honest Definitely. but what if what if they're failing they're holding back because they want you you know there's people who can just put a facade mm -hmm. um that you know you will not uncover unless maybe you pray to the lord and say please lord expose anything that you know is not being disclosed here if there's any um evil or hidden past please expose it and um, that may deal with it or if, if actually if the lord exposes it i think that's when you just call it quits because if it's not revealed in the counseling session that means it would have been like under the carpet you know so i think there's some those kind of sessions they might be good but there's some people might still be hiding some things because they still they still want to go ahead but they just do not want to disclose certain facts. And this is, this so. is number one, we should have marriage counseling with somebody that, premarital counseling with somebody that you trust. Mm -hmm. trust. Uh, and somebody who's also going to be straightforward with you, who's not going mm -hmm. to use words. Huh? Yeah. To things uh, with you, but to help you understand the gravity of marriage and the importance of establishing the right foundation. And all these are supposed to help you then uh, guard, put up guard mechanisms <laughs> to ensure that the marriage is built on the right foundation. You have the right purpose for your marriage and uh, both of you <clears throat> are focused on ensuring the success of this marriage. Uh, mm. and not, you know, having facades and pretenses. Yeah. Or getting married for the sake of status and getting married for the sake of, uh, oh, I'm a worship leader, so I have to be married now. <clears throat> so Senior, for, yeah. Like some of those stars shall discuss. Uh, is it good when I discuss them in the phone? Which one? <laughs> maybe I call or maybe I text it like, please, uh, I have something that I want to share with you. 
in the phone. Then what is that? Yeah, you are free. No, I have 10 abortion in the phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> issues there are issues of, of gravity issue, issues of have different gravity levels of gravity yeah and you have to be careful that when you communicate something uh, it is it does not come across in the way that you don't intend Amen. before you share somebody something so serious and so critical like that you need to prepare the person then the person needs to be prepared prepare that there is there is a you need to have a discussion about something very important. Mm. So there must be a preparatory period. Mm. And sometimes it may be better to share the information with your pastor, yeah? With your, 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 your mm. say or fiancé, together with your pastor there, for the sake of, uh, of your safety, probably. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Is the bishop belted with you or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness for your safety he might just murder you right <laughs> Look, you know, uh, talking about the media we have um I, I know i know we are christians here discussing uh, of christian of christianity but but you have people not everybody in the church was born in the church yeah mm -hmm. we all came from mm -hmm. that, all these things we have we have a young man that was uh, that killed her girlfriend in Namibia because mm. this is they were not born again as such, but he killed his girlfriend. Why? Uh, he was in a relationship with this girl. I don't know whether they were preparing to get married. I don't know, but she was paying for his rent. Okay. Mm. Mm. Red flag. Oh, gosh. Paying for his rent, and. He was cheating. He was having another relationship. Oh, no. <laughs> when she found out that he was having another relationship, he decided to kill her. Is he in jail? I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know in what manner she decided to approach him to, 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 to confront him. But <laughs> He killed her and left her to wallow in her own blood in, 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 her, in the apartment. This guy had his his uh, priorities wrong. You killed the one who's paying your rent. <laughs> that was <feeding> him. <laughs> <laughs> the one paying your rent. That's ridiculous. Oh no. Very much. Very much. And so uh, I uh, think he killed her because she's I'm sure she is threatened not to pay for him anymore and she was threatening to leave him. This and is he just acted. Listen to the lies. Impulse. the lies he told her that he didn't want he didn't want her to, to be with anybody else. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> oh, so he can have another one, but she she does not need to have someone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Lord help us I'm telling to you. identify time wasters. Mm -hmm. and so and so a person like that now you want to approach them and say let us talk about a b c d <laughs> you never know you never know if this, if this person was going to to, to be to become your killer you see i don't know if he's psycho yeah so you may want also to consider your safety <laughs> you may want to consider your safety when you share some of these things yeah. definitely Definitely, definitely. All right. Uh, is there anything that we forgot here that we did not address? All right. So this this is what premarital counseling should achieve. And so let us not be afraid of premarital counseling. I know a number of us have, uh, a few of us here have baggages. Hmm? Um, from where? But before you came to Christ, there were issues, yeah? And, and, and these are issues, very, very sensitive issues that, uh, that will need to be handled. <clears throat> so premarital counseling is supposed to be that avenue where uh, together with the bishop, you can grapple or with your pastor, you can grapple some of these difficult, difficult issues. All right. Uh, so we have two hours gone and we have uh, 
We have two hours, 40, 18 minutes that have passed. We have 40 minutes to go. In these 40 minutes, I would like to talk about uh, differences in marriage. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So differences in marriage. We have to realize that um, getting married is not uh, Hollywood business. Yeah? <laughs> and marriage is a wonderful thing, no doubt. Marriage is a beautiful institution. God created it. And it can be a great source of joy, great source of improvement. I mean, of, our, of, 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 of our growth and a great place to, of, of satisfaction too. Yeah? Uh, but if you're not careful, you can you yourself can end up destroying what is supposed to be good. Great sadness, depression. <laughs> yes, yes. We have to realize that we as human beings, you as a woman, you as a man, you have your own challenges, you have your own weaknesses. You are not yes. super, you are not superwoman. I'm superwoman. <laughs> You are the expert. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, a pastor, uh, was it a pastor? Uh, somebody was uh, doing a marriage seminar mm. and saying, there's nobody who's perfect. Yeah. And, and saying that, that is, there, is there anybody here that you know, that you know anybody who's perfect? <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't met anybody who's perfect. One man at the back, he'll, he'll raise his hand. He said, I know one who's perfect. Mm -hmm. He said, my wife's ex-husband. <laughs> now, what does she mean? In their relationship, she const constantly kept comparing the husband to the to the previous to the ex-husband husband. are you kidding me she should have just stayed with him <laughs> so none of us are perfect none we are broken individuals i know you know yourself you know you know your heart i also know mm -hmm. and so and because of that and we are so unique Complex too, complex individuals. Our thought processes are quite fascinating. The way we reason. And so as men and women, we think differently. We behave differently. We see things totally you know, on a different scale. As it is said, when, as a man, when you are handling with a situation, when a man handles with a situation, he focuses on that issue only. Yeah? If we are talking about, let's say, uh, budgeting, talking about budget, and then he that alone. It's like they, they, they call it thinking in a box, sort of box. We handle one box at a time. But for the woman, it's different. The woman handles different boxes at any given time. So when she's thinking about money, she's also thinking about something else. Grandma is thinking about another issue here, thinking about another issue there. And, and is trying to bring them together in one uh, conversation. And that is a, is a good source of conflict as well. Not that it's bad, not that these personalities are bad. This is how God created us. Is this Eunice? All right, yes, Eunice, you may, uh, you may leave. Uh, if, uh, if you get any bundles, you can always tune in using uh, Telegram. There is, um, it will be easy in your bundles. Okay. Thank you so much, Blessed Bishop. Actually, I'm going, I'll reach you through your WhatsApp. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Amen. So we are different. When we get, when, as, when, as you prepare for marriage, <clears throat> you have to realize that we are different. Men and women are totally different. We don't think the same. Apart from not thinking the same, we have different 
backgrounds. We grew up in different homes, different countries, <clears throat> sometimes different countries, sometimes different neighborhoods, sometimes we went to different schools and all these issues constitute our differences. Whereas our differences are what brings us together. Um, indeed, imagine if you get married to somebody who is exactly like you, how exciting will that marriage be? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it is our differences that, uh, that, that, that draw us together. It is our differences mm -hmm. that, that make up a marriage. There is a reason why God decided that a man and a woman should get married and not Adam and Michael. It is Adam, and, Adam and Michael. <laughs> the world is pushing today for men to marry men and women to marry women. Sickness. Very. They call it um, gender dysphoria in uh, domination. And they call it indeed immorality before the Lord. Right. So, so there is a reason why God decided for men and women to get married. So there are these differences, this uniqueness, unique qualities that the Lord has put in a woman that He has not put in a man. Unique qualities that the Lord has put in a man that He has not put in a woman. And so when we come together in marriage, these uniqueness, these differences, whereas they serve as the glue that brings us together, they can also serve as a, a source of a division if we are not careful. Yeah? So we need to be able to appreciate one of the differences. So when you get married, if you prepare to get married, that's the one thing that you must <clears throat> have in your mind. Learn to appreciate your husband's differences or learn <laughs> appreciate your, your wife's what kind of differences <laughs> uh, now look we already talked about other things that constitute sin we're not talking about sin here <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. differences such as let's talk about the simple one how he puts the socks or the dirty clothes in the <laughs> Toilet roll, whether to put the toilet roll on this side or to put it facing the other side. Whether to squeeze the, 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 the toothpaste. The toothpaste. <laughs> from, the, from the body in the middle. Yeah? Or other differences, your money personalities. Yeah? Uh, the way you, 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 you handle people, the way you care for people, the way you talk to people. Mm. Some of us are people's persons. We just love to be around people and communicate and help people find solutions. Whereas other people, they like being secluded, being alone in their, in their own, in their home. Some, some people can just stay home all day and cook and bake and whatever. Yes. Read the Bible, pray and sing. That's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me too. I know. <laughs> I can do both. <laughs> and so now you get married to your, to your husband who likes to go out to the parks and no. to go out and meet people and do everything. <laughs> That's also fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so you need to learn how to how to appreciate that. Not mm -hmm. castigate your husband because he likes to go out or castigate your wife because mm -hmm. He likes to stay home all day. Yeah. Uh, Where is he going? Yes. Every day you're going out. Every day you're going out. And then you, you, you just make an issue out of the non issue. So you need to appreciate. Once you appreciate that this is this is this person has his unique uh, special special uh, uniqueness, has unique, which do not constitute sin, by the way. Our differences are not sin, of course. <laughs> Our differences are not seen. Whether you are an extrovert or an introvert, I get into those um, tests. Mm. Um, yeah, personality tests. Uh, that is not seen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, if, if you are married to a husband who talks so much when it's supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder can you really be able to have two people who talk too much? You, you can. Mm -hmm. See, possible. 
because of our difference, usually are attracted to the difference in the other person. Yeah? That's what you find. People, a, a, a saver is usually married to, not always, but most of the time, is usually married to somebody who spends, who's a spender. Yeah? An introvert is married to an extrovert because they, <clears throat> they, 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 they find something so beautiful in the other person in the sense, for example, a, a, an introvert, because they cannot, they don't like to speak too much. They are reserved. When they are with a, an extrovert, extrovert mm. speaks so much. And it's <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It talks about <laughs> sons, and then after that, how he went to Italy, and then everything out of the heart is just bubbling out. And so the introvert does not have to speak much, right? And, uh, and so they don't have that pressure, especially before marriage. So they don't feel that pressure of performing, like I have to speak. Whereas uh, the, the extrovert now, being one who's speaking too much, he feels like this person that I'm talking to appreciates me so much because when I speak, they listen. The introvert is a tremendous listener and they have to fight for attention speaking non-stop and the person is nodding and is agreeing with everything they say. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> problem. It's a problem. Blessed Bishop. Huh? This person who's not speaking can keep so many secrets. By the time you're realizing, <laughs> wouldn't you be so traumatized? <laughs> <laughs> There's the caveat now. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And so these differences, the so the introvert is attracted to the listener, I mean to the because I don't have to perform. The extrovert is attracted to this listener and feels like, wow, this person loves me so much. They can just listen to me all day. Yeah. <laughs> I want to listen, I'm forced to listen because, well, it's so easy to just hang in there and listen. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and so we, we find that, we find that, um, uh, that difference drawing us closer together. It only becomes now a problem, of course, when you're in marriage because mm -hmm. the extrovert wants to listen also. <laughs> and the introverts find themselves not knowing how to talk. I mean, not being able to talk because they thought, well, I don't have to do anything. I just have to speak. So appreciate one another's differences. That's the first thing, right? Realize that you are different. Realize that you're different. Appreciate one another's differences. And then number three, realize that you cannot force anybody to change. Mm -hmm. And you are not supposed to change anybody. You're not supposed to force anybody to change. You can't change anyone. Yes. You cannot change and you must not try to change. <laughs> True. But here's a secret. But you can change somebody by your behavior, by your example. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you want to see a change in your husband who is uh, quick tempered and does not forgive quickly, this bishop pastor of, uh, husband of yours or this pastor husband of yours, you thought you are such a prayer warrior who forgives quickly and then you get married and then you realize the man struggles with resentment. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way yeah. is by, as we said before, by you seeing, how can I change? How can I respond better to this person? Mm. And how can I be humble? In order to demonstrate Christ-likeness to my husband, to my wife. When you do that, then you see that the other person will also be prompted to change. Because it sounds like somebody is either in a hospital or in the supermarket with the peeping. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know who it is. We have a number of mics on. Great. So our, our, our differences are what make up our marriage. They are good. The Lord has embedded there. The Lord has embedded there the qualities that are to build our marriages. Yeah. <clears throat> and so we must recognize them, appreciate them, and then, uh, and then also learn to nurture and also learn to nurture one another's differences, not the bad kind, 
right? Not a Somebody is a habitual liar. That is not a good difference. Yeah. If if, if you if you are married to your husband who is a keyboard player and then all of a sudden this man is starting to lie, that is not a difference. But that is that is that one needs to be sorted out. That is of course a sinful behavior. Yeah. Uh, if maybe we all mute and then we can see who's <laughs> nice is Kabenko. Is it me? Okay, it's gone now. Is it? Yeah. Saline Akoth. I hope you can hear us. Veronica, welcome. I hope you can hear us. Grace, I hope you can hear me still. So you can hear us. Naomi Deshika, I hope you can hear us. Okay. And Jacob, I have not uh, had a response from you. I hope you can hear as well as as the blessing. All right. We have uh, about the Bishop. I can hear you well. Great. I'm getting you well. Thank you. So those are our differences. And they are shaped by a lot of things. Of course, they are shaped by how we grew up, by our parents. Growing up with our parents, we learn from our parents behaviors that we think are best. Yeah, There are still <clears throat> behaviors that are stuck in us even after we come to Christ. There are still things that we have inherited from our parents that are still lingering there, which are not bad. Yeah, For example, if you grew up as a firstborn, or as the only child, or as the lastborn, and your mother spoiled you so much for being that only child. Yeah? I wish. <laughs> Whenever you come home, dinner is always ready. You never had to wash your clothes, even though you are oh, wonderful. Thank you, Sister <clears throat> Esther and Salina and Veronica. Good. And so you grew up with your parents and you're spoiled or they treated you so well, which is not nothing bad. And, and let's say they took you, uh, you had a time out every weekend with your family. You, you visited a family member, something like that. And then you come into your marriage and you expect to continue the same family tradition that your parents used to do. Yeah? Every weekend you go and visit somebody and your husband now has other plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe he never mm. had any such or such habit or maybe now the new habit is there is bible study and and you still grow up with this habit of i need to visit my family members once a week or i need to visit my parents once a week every saturday now your husband is saying no we, are, we must have bible study <laughs> uh, uh, once a week every saturday we must have bible study at home so this, is, this does not constitute sin. It's just that you have to come together as husband and wife and discuss and come to a good conclusion. So appreciate one another's differences. Appreciate your backgrounds, where each of you are coming from, <clears throat> and then make a decision that suits you both, that works well for both of you, for your marriage, for your, for your relationship, for your house, for your children, and for everybody. Yeah. Differences. Right. Okay. Anybody with a question on this? On this issue? Anybody with a question on this issue of differences? I think we also discussed this before in one of the sessions. Probably earlier, yeah. In the first, yeah. first in the in the last year. When we were saying about um like, for example, if you have a hobby or a sport, you don't have to give it up yeah. when you get married. Yeah. You know, you just accommodate each other. <laughs> That's it. Very true. Or if you are married to a husband who travels for conferences and you don't like to travel, so you have to just find a way to accommodate one another. Yes, definitely. Good. So if everybody is satisfied, no question? No questions at all? Everybody satisfied? It's in November. No, November. Yes, suggestion or question? I've got a question. Yes. Yeah, and my question is, if you have to address those differences, 
how do you put them across so that the other your partner is able to understand you and not feel like you are trying to condemn her or you are trying to defend yourself or something just someone that have met someone to understand that this is my difference this is how i see things this is how i was expecting it to be rather than the way you you are putting it so how do you communicate that without making the other person angry or pissed off number one you have to build trust every any any relationship that flourishes <clears throat> excuse me must flourish on trust yeah build a build trust in your relationship that allows uh, trust allows you allows both of you to know communicates that we are both interested in each other's welfare yeah but there is trust in marriage i trust what you say you trust what i say you don't try to second guess me in a sense of, as if you assume the worst of my of me whenever i bring up something so when there is trust i know that you are a man of truth i know that you are a woman of truth and we have built our relationship on a very good foundation of uh, of of the truth by every by everything that we do in our marriage yeah all the little things that you do in marriage whether it's your washing dishes your cleaning the toilet your making the bed all these things cleaning the yard all these things are building uh, 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 avenues for building trust in your marriage and so when you notice differences number one you must you must uh, not be quick you must not be quick to criticize let me say that again somebody say before you criticize make sure that you compliment at least five times other say 10 times or whatever <laughs> so that you don't come across as a fault finder yeah because you want to see change yeah you want to, to to address a address an issue that needs to be handled whether it's a a matter of sin or not a matter of sin so you must have a habit of of appreciating your your spouse or you must develop a habit of appreciating your spouse we're not talking about a stranger here we're talking about your husband or your wife yeah and so learn to appreciate learn to let, let them know deliberately that you appreciate them you love them so that when when it comes when you when you approach them and say there is something i would like us to discuss again you need to prepare somebody if it's if it's especially something that is of great gravity maybe you want to change a habit of theirs that that they have learned from childhood yeah you need to prepare somebody <clears throat> and so uh acknowledge that you yourself also are not perfect and then prepare them and then sit down and be kind in your request there's a difference between demanding change and negotiating change <laughs> so if you want your your spouse to change something uh you must learn to negotiate you must be a good negotiator <laughs> yeah as we said before just because your husband does not mean you can boss your wife around and tell her whatever yeah. you want her to <laughs> i guess if you have that mentality don't get married <laughs> <laughs> yes so don't come across demanding and and trying to dominate dominate in the sense of a yeah a dictatorship kind of thing where your husband, your wife is not allowed to speak for herself it's not allowed to to explain herself it's not allowed to explain yeah and and say have her point of view whenever you want to change you have to realize that things are not always as you think yeah things are not always as you think and your wife or your husband may see things totally different you see a problem but they see growth for example <laughs> yeah they feel like wow i've made progress in the last few weeks and you you are like oh man this thing needs to change 
So you have two different lenses. This is now a difference. Yeah? So you have two different lenses. You're approaching things from a totally different perspectives. So you have to acknowledge that my wife may see things totally different. And so you must approach also wanting to learn, to learn her side of the story, her point of view. So whatever assumption you have about her, about why she's doing what she's doing, you must be willing to give it up. Yeah, you address the issue to gather understanding, to gather knowledge, also to understand, so that you know whether you have you, you got it right. If your assumptions are confirmed, then negotiate your change. But if it turns out that actually things are not what you think they are, then you must be willing to give it up, give up your 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 <laughs> whatever it is that you wanted to do, you, what you you wanted to ask of your spouse. Yeah. Or say it when you're in happy moods, That's not when unheated conversations. You never. Yes. Yes. That's the other Senior... Yeah. That's Senior right. Bishop, it's, it's, it's short tempered, uh, categorized as a uh, differences or what? How do you, call, how do you categorize that? Uh, short temper. Uh, no, short temper. No, that's not difference. <laughs> <laughs> quick uh, slow to speak slow to get angry <laughs> i would say be slow to get angry short temper is uh, for instance uh, yes for instance you find uh, couples in the house so one is uh, short temper and the other one is not how to deal with that they have to realize that they have a problem it's, it's, when, when somebody gets tempered, they have to realize that they have a problem. Sometimes, mm -hmm. because if they don't realize that they have a problem, they would think, no, I'm not, I'm not short-tempered. I'm just upset or... Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they, they say, it's, it's a righteous anger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, or they feel like they're justified. They feel like I, I, I have every right to be angry. Maybe they acknowledge they're angry, but they're like, I have every right to be angry because you offended me, mm -hmm. because you insulted me. You insulted my dignity. You attacked me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they feel justified <laughs> to, to, to lash out or to scream or to shout, whatever the word is, to throw the glass against the wall, <laughs> or to bang on the table. So I was actually, I was listening to this um, relationship counselor, he's a Christian, and um, just the facts that he was stating about the different age groups that um, help people know where they are in terms of knowing themselves, he was like the pre 25s they sometimes they can be um, because they're still growing, you know. He stated that they're acting their age. There's a certain things that they do, it's just acting their age. But then from 25 onwards, you know, somebody has a better understanding of themselves, they know their character, their behaviors, so they're able to you know, well understand, you know themselves, their career path, whatever. And um, mm -hmm. he was stating there's some issues that when uh, pre-25, as he mentioned, um, you know, you could just bust out in anger, you know, you don't even think about it. Um, you just blurt it out. You, you don't care, you know. Um, and he was stating that, that sometimes majority that, you know, within the age group you know you're still yet to mature you're still yet to grow and I thought it was funny because it is true sometimes you know during that period of time you're still growing you're still learning about yourself even though at, at that particular age you, you really do think you are very <laughs> I, you I, know it all <laughs> yes they feel like they know everything they're on top of yeah. the world mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Personality differences, yes, different stages of growth. That's right. Mm -hmm. All those things play a role. Um, uh, yes, young people, 
uh, in that age category before 25 yeah they yes quite a number quite a, can be quite proud because mm -hmm. they've read books they have you know they have, <laughs> just finished uni like yes, i know it they can <laughs> add, you know they know everything <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. yes that's right and then later on when life hits them when yeah hits the road yeah uh, whatever the progress are then reality strikes them but oops yeah. i don't I actually don't know as much or they are and you know they're very gone their weaknesses their sins their faults finally gets exposed they, they, they get mm -hmm. to make a lot of mistakes and uh, mess up big time and then they begin to shrink back some of them not not all of them yeah you were saying and then the other thing i remember you had said um oh gosh did the thought just go out of my head <laughs> you remember it. Um, you know in terms of um handling of money mm -hmm. you know when they're in uni like when you're in uni it's not really your hard and cash you know sometimes it's you know you have been helped you know it's not the money that you have worked you've gone to work you're not doing a nine to five job you know <laughs> to cater for your needs mm -hmm. so somebody within that age group sometimes you need to at least be out not depending on your parents depending on yourself to make certain decisions that you know help you in terms of navigating into the life of marriage at least you have handled some businesses you have been able to um manage your your life at least you know your career path not everybody goes to university i think we ha you have just said that up um earlier on when we started this session but at least you know which which route you want to take you know whether it's academia or arts or music whichever mm -hmm. um but pre 25s actually when i was listening to that um, psychologist i was like it is so true it is actually so <laughs> it is so true marriage is a journey of self discovery mm -hmm. uh you don't know so much about yourself until you get married mm -hmm. because you are so lenient in yourself and you are quick to forgive yourself and to give your and to, to give yourself a um, benefit of a doubt and but when you get married <clears throat> now we are you are with somebody whose microscopic eyes are on you and your own microscopic <laughs> eyes are on you. And so every move they make, you see. Every move you make, they see. And so when you mess up, they see it. When they mess up, you see it. But they don't see it themselves. And you yourself, you don't see it. And you're quick to defend yourself because you're like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. So it's a journey of self-discovery. It's mm -hmm. about yourself, learning a lot about yourself. Uh, and so be prepared for that. That at least that's the first thing I learned in our first year of marriage. That I'm I'm not actually who I thought I was to in, in certain <laughs> <way>. yes. <laughs> I didn't realize I had anger issues until <laughs> uh, yes, just for an example, I didn't realize that uh, I was financially irresponsible until I got married. Yeah. And, and so I had to learn. I had to learn. Um, of course, I was in the process. Thank God, yeah, I was in the process of, uh, especially when it comes to finance. And as I said some time before, that given our the way our our educational education system is set up, you can find yourself at 25, you are still in school, or 30, you are still in school, and uh, you have not really learned to handle money. Uh, mm. government is paying for, for a school here or university here or this grant is paying for university here and uh, you have not yet gotten a job and you've not had a class on how to manage personal finance and so when, when you get money and you don't have a lot of you're in a hostel you're in the hostel um, it's, it's quite easy to be irresponsible financially 
Mm. So you have to learn. You then have to unlearn and learn new things. So when you become, when you get married, don't think you know everything. <clears throat> Even after all the sessions of marriage counseling, there is always room to grow. It's true. We have seven minutes. How how shall we wrap up the seven minutes? Anybody with a question or with something to say? So we round it up. Anybody with a question? Angie, thank you. You, 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 you remained thus far. I thought you were going to. Amen. I keshed with you. This is night number two, Kesha. <laughs> Almost seven o'clock that side. Staying, staying awake uh, for two days um, all night is, is pretty tough, but um, I think I'm going to take it away now. <laughs> My eyes are starting to fail me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. You should know how we feel when we're doing the Kesha from Friday to today. <laughs> I've been there. I'm being there with you. I, I've done the Kesha with you now for two days now. <laughs> I'm I'm on Saturday. I'm moving into Sunday in another maybe I don't know, twenty four hours or is it eight hours, twelve hours? Oh, yeah. And then wait a minute. Yes, you are in Saturday now. Saturday. Yeah. Morning. Yeah, yeah we are Saturday afternoon. We are Saturday afternoon here. Oh, yes, Saturday we are five afternoon. Five hours. Yeah, we're only five hours behind. Uh, Blessed Bishop, I heard you mentioning something to do with finances. I know I've missed uh, some of the meetings where uh, you've already discussed this, but just quickly, you're supposed to share your finances or disclose your finances to your partner? When you are getting married, uh, as a Christian, you'd want to have, you, you know, everything together. Uh, yes, you should disclose it. Your finance is like, it's like, uh, you, you could say, it's like have, uh, your past relationships, for example. You cannot afford to hide them from your, from your partner. So, yes. Is it husband or before marriage? Maybe. Before, before marriage, when, when before marriage, you are of course not going to share any finance. You're not going to be sharing bank accounts. Yeah. Mm. But, but the process begins, you must be preparing one another that, okay, this is what I have. So that when we get married, this is what we have. This is what we will. Have. When you are not married, you're not going to be paying one another school fees and uh, nope. loan and, and what is that? Paying each other's debts. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Once you get married, whatever debt your wife came into marriage with or your husband came into marriage with, now it's your debt too. <laughs> yeah. Mm, gosh. Now it's your debt too. <laughs> wow. So if you have a house somewhere, this house, it's gonna be like he you want you wanna have you want to tell him you have a house. Yeah, well, you can hide a bit and, and keep quiet, and then if you, if <laughs> you don't want him to know, so that he can buy a house like you buy a house together, don't have to know I have a house somewhere. You are in British Columbia and you have a house in, let's say, in French Guiana <laughs> or British. no, in Africa, somewhere, wherever. Yeah, let's say in Africa, and mm. that house you have a uh, Tenants there. Either way, either you have tenants who are paying you quite a hefty amount of money in Nairobi City there. Or not. <laughs> or it's a house that is accumulating debts. Okay, either way. Either accumulating debt because of the city council, the funds and I mean taxes and all these things. Or, or, or you are making money with the, with the house. Mm -hmm. Or it's not accumulating debt, but you are you are constantly paying for the for the rent. You are constantly paying for for for, for mortgage. Now, how are you going to explain that to your husband? Where is the money going? I thought you said you earn this amount of money. Where is the rest? <laughs> <laughs> no, the okay. There can be a situation whereby there's just a house. It's just there. Like it's not like really any bothersomeness. Like you know. 
uh, you have to pay anything for it. It's just because somewhere you built it when you were on your bachelor's or your um, and now you've met this person and you, um, you're getting together. So you, you don't want to disclose too much. For example, you know, some people might just be attracted. Oh, she has a house. Okay, that's good. Or, uh, or um, perhaps you just want to make sure that first of all, everything is, is, you know, everything is tied well together by the grace of God. And then... Oh, yeah. yeah. Before marriage, I can understand. Even just you know, somebody... Okay. You know, I have this thing because there's some people you notice when you mention you're outside the country, the interest seems to be a bit higher. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, yeah. And then they start, oh, you have you have stocks, you have finances, you have a house, or oh, this one, I'm marrying her. And then, you, 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 you know, he's coming in or she's coming in for the wrong intention. But yeah. um, maybe but after, the one you... after you've already now moved on to the higher step of knowing each other, like maybe... Okay, you people have identified your desire to to want to be in this relationship. You've identified that you're both okay. Like you you didn't probably you also don't know he owns something. Maybe he owns a castle in um, Scotland <laughs> or something. And and then um, he he says, okay, she's not a bad person. So now we move forward. Like okay, let's introduce. Um, our families and let's we've already encountered the issue of different problems we have or issues so that's when now you say it you you don't want to be telling somebody like initially oh i have this i have that definitely i well think it's always important like i think what we were discussing is more after marriage not before okay all right yeah and, uh, we, we we've talked about the process of prepare of uh uh finding a partner and then you know preparing for marriage yeah mm -hmm. the process of you're praying for your partner or you are sharing with the bishop bishop i want to get married and then the man comes right and then you're getting to know each other are you going now to to come out guns blazing i have a castle in, in new england i have a car no. <laughs> Uh, a house in Nairobi and no. the banker, no, you're not going to disclose these things. <laughs> right? When, 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 when the decision is made, you are getting married. You are undergoing premarital counseling. You are preparing, you are already doing your wedding plans. That advanced stage, yes, now you have to, pre to, 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 to disclose everything. Why? Because even legally, when you get married, immediately you say, I do, and then the ring is on. Finish all the, <laughs> all the laws that govern marriage are now binding. Yeah? So that if an accident happens on your way from the altar to your honeymoon, then, then the laws apply. Either you keep everything or according to the, whatever will that you have written. So, so things must be sorted out before marriage that, okay, we are going to have things together. This is what I have. This is what, what, what you have. And uh, these are my, yeah, you're disclosing your finances and everything and everything and everything, right? So that everything is clear then when you get married. Again, it's part of that going into marriage with everything clear and transparent. So you don't disclose too early and you don't wait after 10 years of marriage before you disclose that, uh, I, oh, by the way, I have an, an account in the U.S. where I have kept um, a grand sum amount. <laughs> touched got, away from money. So before, there is that period now, you are close to your wedding. Everything is done. All the motives are sorted out. You know that this is not infatuation. You know that this person is not chasing money. He's not chasing uh, limelight is not chasing other things. The motives are clear. Everything is clear with parents. Everything is clear with pastor, bishop, you know. Yeah, then that's, that the, the things must be made clear at that time that yes, <clears throat> this is what's happening. Now, the worldly people, people of the world, they have come up with a solution. Yeah, they don't want Enough. to. 
It's mm -hmm. good, uh, money. So they say, we can get married and whatever is mine is mine. Whatever is yours remains with you. Mm. So if you want money from me, I decide whether to give you or not. <laughs> and so, and because they're already planning, uh, Brother Joy called it a uh, prenup. He's not here. Prenuptial agreement. It's, it's called prenup. <laughs> yeah. So if, if we get married and I have my business, then you are not going to touch my business when we divorce. <laughs> yeah. So they are already preparing for divorce before the wedding, uh, uh, before the wedding day. So, and and that's really that's not. I don't believe that's what God meant. Designed for. Or me. maybe the person who was meeting you signed the prenup agreement doesn't know you actually have a lot, yeah. and then you sign it, and then he sees what you have, and he's like, <laughs> "Can we reverse?" The <laughs> that is the greed. greed now. <laughs> That's the greed now that must be sorted out prior, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so definitely, yeah, there is that advanced stage where things must be made clear. Yeah. So that um, you will not be arguing about the house that you didn't know before you got married. Yeah. Because Would you even be arguing as long as you don't have to pay for it? <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> Because of the way we think, somebody could think that you're trying to hide something because of maybe some hidden relationship somewhere. Another family. Now, how come you have a house that you didn't tell me? Who, who is it that goes to that house that I don't know about? <laughs> Who's living in that house in building? Can you tell me? And then you start the tenants. My grandfather, my grandmother, everybody lives there. There's a... There's a the whole clan is living there and when you go to Africa you all go there you mix up now with them is, <laughs> they say it's my cousin but I had a, <laughs> I had a cousin issue eh? <laughs> somebody say ah, who's my cousin who's my cousin my cousin <laughs> this, this cousin the Lord have mercy on, on my wickedness yeah, I read a story where this um, this husband has been married with his wife for eight years, and he said he has a cousin in the UK, mm -hmm. um, and she has an eight year old, and he he even introduced to the wife, and they became good friends. Mm -hmm. So now the the husband built two apartments in Ghana, and when the lady was coming to visit in Ghana, he, he lent her to stay in one of the apartments. And she was staying for a little bit of time and, you know, they were still friends. And then one time, um, the man's best friend came and told the wife, I was like, I can't hide anymore. The, the woman is not his cousin. You know, they used to, you know, to be together before she went to study. And the child that she has, it's actually his child. Mm. Mm. And she was currently pregnant. Mm. So he was like, now that even that baby is, mm. is his baby. So Hot the ways. world is wicked. Very, wicked. very, very wicked. Mm. But, um, we shall not have those kind of situations because we have the Lord as our guiding. Uh, May we be obedient to this. Yeah. That's the yes. caveat now. May we be willing to allow the Lord to lead us. Amen. Because yeah? once the Lord leads us, then we are in safe hands. If we want to take mm. our hands, push, 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 push. Uh, you, you you meet today, you want to get married next week. You meet today, you want to get married. <laughs> you want to do your thing. Oh, no, pastor, bishop, this one is a keyboard player. I've known you him. You don't understand. The Lord showed me in the dream that he's the one. <laughs> we cannot afford <laughs> uh, Marriage can be rewarding. Once, once the Lord has his... Uh, his you will see great success. Let us be willing to allow the Lord to lead us and uh, mm. 
to be very humble. <clears throat> and Amen. before you get married, I will challenge you to allow the Lord to really help help you to be truly broken. In the sense mm-hmm. that to find true brokenness. There's a teaching by the mighty brothers of the Lord called broken. What is being broken? Like, are you supposed to be so yeah. <laughs> desperate? Or what do you mean? The flesh must Your flesh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. More so that you can be reformed anew. Mm. So that you can have a heart that submits and is obedient to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And truly humble, filled with all those wonderful beatitudes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Truly. Sometimes we can pretend. It has touched me and he has really changed my heart. And then after two days, three days, four days, you are back to your old habits. <laughs> Mm. You discover that you are not broken at all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the as you said, habits are hard to break. But with the Lord, it, it's also it's a journey. As you allow the Holy Spirit to break you, He helps you overcome with time. So you just have to submit to the crushing and the molding. Mm-hmm. Very much so indeed. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to the... Angie still refused to go to to sleep. (laughs) Um, Thank you. We we enjoy having input. We bless the Lord. At least I made it today. God is so wonderful. I I at least see... I I saw... He helped me to see through what what discussions you're having fully because all the time I, I give up somewhere in the middle and I'm like gone. <laughs> you tried. It's you tried. You are joining around midnight uh or s- shortly after midnight. That's uh <laughs> I don't know if any of us here who's been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it is well. Yes. It is well. I'm going to ask Angie to pray for us then. Uh, oh my goodness. Right now in the morning. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> All right. Let us come before the Lord, blessed sheep of Christ. Amen. Precious, precious Lord, we come before thee this day. Um, it's uh, morning or um, afternoon or evening in different places. And we want to give you thanks and praise Jehovah Rapha for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us to come together as a fellowship so that we can be able to submit our desires and our thoughts and um, our, you know, our destinies unto you fully for the plans that you have for us, for our future, for those who desire to settle down in marriage and even those who are thinking about it or have already begun the journey somehow. We want to give you thanks and praise God because you're a mighty God and you have allowed us to have this discussion. Lord, we just want to to submit ourselves that each and every single aspect of this uh, fellowship that we have discussed, that you may be able to continue to speak to us individually or in our own unique ways and continue to mold us so that we can be able to be ambassadors of your of your message and we can be able to bring in this um, gifts that you have for us into our future marriages that you have planned for us lord even as we go on to different uh, things that we have during this day we want to pray and ask you father that you may please cover us with your holy precious blood and um, may the holy spirit continue to guide us in our ways in our journey and we may continue to be humble and to follow the, the, the direction and the leadership that you have already spoken unto us. Lord, help us to have obedience, help us to be submissive, and help us to be righteous and to live the way that you desire for us. We put all this before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. I follow you. Came in. You watch the video later. Welcome, by the way.
<laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll watch it later. Yes, we will. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Monica, Saline, Veronica, Justina, Jake, Overseer Jacob, Dennis, Musali, Mr. Delphine, Pastor Delphine, Pastor Kathy, Meke, Martha, Angie. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Shalom. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Bishop. You're welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Bishop, I yeah. I came in much later. I don't know if you could share with us the, 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 the discussion while you're starting. Uh, you want to, to, what about the discussion? You could share with, with us everything that you had uh, handled before when you're starting, when you started this session today. Yes, yes, the, the, I'm, I'm record, I record it and I'll talk. Okay. I'll also put the audio on Telegram. Okay. Yeah, and share the link on WhatsApp. Okay, thank you. All right. The Lord bless you, everybody. <laughs>